After a disastrous rally in New York, Donald Trump was hit with a shocking piece of news out of North Carolina, one that could jeopardize his chances in the swing state for good. So before we dive into Trump's Big Apple meltdown, here's the latest scoop on one of his favorite candidates, Mark Robinson, the Republican nominee for governor in North Carolina, whom he has endorsed. CNN has now confirmed that Robinson is now facing pressure from fellow Republicans to drop out of the race after discovering Robinson's shady past and insane remarks that he made on an adult film website. According to CNN, Robinson referred to himself as a, quote, black Nazi and said he was a fan of slavery as well as referred to himself as a, quote, Perv, all in the comment section on a pornography website called, quote, Nude Africa, end quote. CNN has the receipts, too, some of which are too lewd to even read on here, but let me share one with you that is straight up vile. Here is a direct quote from the Trump-backed candidate Mark Robinson, which he posted on this adult site's messaging board, and it reads, quote, Slavery is not bad. Some people need to be slaves. I wish they would bring it back. I would certainly buy a few, end quote. Sounds about MAGA to me. He also admitted to peeping into women's bathrooms as a 14-year-old and said he watched transgender pornography despite his campaign's violent rhetoric against the transgender community. More MAGA hypocrisy. Go figure. Yet, in spite of the mountain of indisputable evidence, Robinson is taking a page out of Trump's playbook and is, of course, denying everything, telling CNN today, quote, this is not us. These are not our words. And this is not anything that is characteristic of me. I'm not going to get into the minutia of how somebody manufactured this. These salacious tabloid lies, end quote. But these are not lies. These are Robinson's own words that he posted to this site under a username that has his own email link to it and to an account that CNN verified to be his. In my view, Robinson knows he's cooked. A bombshell report like this could give Kamala Harris the edge to win the state this November. In fact, it's being so poorly received that North Carolina's G GOP is now urging Robinson to pull his name from the ballot, which he has until tonight at midnight to do. What's so crazy about all of this is that Robinson is already on the record espousing Holocaust denialism as well he's compared LGBTQ people to flies and maggots and he's also degraded transgender people several times including saying things like quote if you're a man on Friday night and all of a sudden Saturday you feel like a woman and you want to go into the woman's bathroom in the mall you will be arrested or whatever we gotta do to you and Quote. Apparently, the GOP was totally on board with that, but these new revelations, I guess, were a bridge too far for them to defend. Whatever happens to radical Mark Robinson, this is yet another stain on the Republican Party and will definitely cause damage to Trump's chances in North Carolina, considering Trump strongly endorsed Mark Robinson and sung his praises at a recent rally in North Carolina, including referring to Robinson as Martin Luther King on steroids. And he's been an unbelievable Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson. But, you know, I heard him coming in on the plane. I was listening and I said to the people on the plane, watch this. This is Martin Luther King on steroids, okay? Last time I checked, MLK Jr.'s I Had a Dream speech did not include referring to oneself as a Nazi, a pervert, or being pro-slavery. Those are all Mark Robinson originals. Trump's gonna have to own this endorsement on the campaign trail in one of the most pivotal battleground states in the race, which could give Harris the momentum to carry what will likely be a pretty close race, though after this, maybe not so much. What's even more baffling is that old Donald spent the last 24 hours not in a swing state, but instead in New York, a state he lost by 23% to Biden and Harris, trying to convince the crowd that he is now somehow going to flip it red and pull a rabbit out of the hat. And the reason I'm here 
is because it hasn't been done in many decades. It hasn't been done for a long time, but we are going to win New York. No, you're not, Donald. All you've done for New York in the past four years is trash them and cause traffic jams from your criminal trials and sexual assault cases, along with owing their state a half a billion dollars in fraud damages. Nothing you say or do will ever turn New York MAGA, and that includes trying to persuade New Yorkers that you are greater than Elvis. Baby, who could draw crowds? Nobody could draw crowds like me. Nobody, not even close. I'm the greatest of all time, maybe greater even than Elvis, because Elvis had a guitar. I don't have a guitar. To Donald Trump's credit, he is more than but a hound dog. He's also an adjudicated rapist, a serial predator, and a convicted felon. He's also incredibly familiar with Project 2025, as he yet again revealed by praising one of Project 2025's authors, Tom Homan. The great Tom Holman told me the other day, great guy, central casting guy, great guy. Another great guy who Donald Trump claims he doesn't know and has never met who just so happened to contribute to Project 2025. Why does that keep happening? So interesting. What's also interesting is that Trump is now repeating the same stale and overused lines from 2016 in which he asks the crowd in New York, what do they have to lose by voting for him? Vote for Donald Trump. What the hell do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? Their pensions, their reproductive rights, their social security benefits, their health care, their democracy, they stand to lose quite a lot if they vote for you. And it's all listed out in your pal Tom Homan's book, Project 2025. So after stinking it up in New York, Donald packed his bags and went to his safe space on Fox News where he put his age and incoherent on full display. Here he was complaining about getting fact-checked during the debate, which he's evidently still salty about, and then told Greg Gutfeld that the audience went crazy for his performance despite there being no audience at the debate. And they didn't correct her once, and they corrected me everything I said practically, I think nine times or 11 times, and the audience was absolutely they went crazy. Just like Trump's health care plan, no such audience existed. Well, I guess he does have a concept of a health care plan, but we still haven't seen that either. Yikes. What a terrible day for his campaign, though. I hope he doesn't give up on New York just yet. Please, Donald, if you're listening, keep spending that pack money and resources on trying to turn the Big Apple into a battleground state. Nobody likes a quitter. You got this, man. And just to cap off a crazy day. Here was a crowd at J.D. Vance's rally booing at the Fed's lowering interest rates, which a reporter notes will drive down inflation. Question is really quickly just on the Fed cutting. It's a very Wall Street journal question, but the Fed cut the interest rate today by a half a percentage point. Going to alleviate inflation for a lot of people. And so if you have any reaction to that, we'd love it. Well, look, my, my, re- my reaction is... I There you have it. The MAGAs are now pro-inflation, which I guess makes sense why they're supporting Donald Trump, the king of driving up costs and ballooning our national debt by trillions of dollars. Let's see how this whole Mark Robinson fiasco shakes out, and no matter what happens, I expect Kamala Harris and Tim Walls to capitalize on it and receive a bump in the state to add to all their post-debate momentum they've got going on. Things are looking damn good with 47 days to go let's keep it going thank you guys for listening to today's episode of the gen z perspective if you enjoyed it please subscribe to the show and give us a five star review on apple because as you can see the maga lunatics have bombarded the podcast with zero star reviews i think we're worth a little more than that but i also think it shows you how terrified they are of our generation thanks again for tuning in and i'll catch you guys next time on the gen z perspective The Gen Z Perspective's theme song was created and produced by Pokari.